Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'll be checking out Endeavor OS, the April 2021 release. When first logging into Endeavor after an installation, you'll be welcomed by their amazing greeter here, which I really enjoy. Other distributions should be taking note when it comes to an awesome welcome screen because you just get so many options so you're not overwhelmed on what to do right after you install. There's some general information which allows you to go to various different locations that pertain to Endeavor OS. And then after install, this is probably my favorite tab. You can select very subtle things around the environment to either change up the display, resolution, and perhaps make little tweaks to the desktop environment. Like it says here, we have the XFCE Endeavor OS default theme or a vanilla theme if you'd like. Various different logs updating the system. Great things that you'll want to do right after an installation. Endeavor OS is a Arch-based Linux distribution and I'm using the XFCE desktop environment today. We'll keep going through here. You have the assistant, which also shows you how to browse through the Arch packages and packages in the AUR as well using Yay. Updating the system, there's some tips as well, again, on using various different things. Perhaps you're an NVIDIA user. It goes through how to install NVIDIA proprietary drivers for you. I'm a big fan of Endeavor OS, and they've been making a lot of great improvements just to make the experience in Linux even better, especially when you're using Arch Linux. You can add more apps, and it talks about various different apps. Now, some of these are repeated through the different sections, but it makes sense for the sections. You can also turn this message off if you don't want it popping up every time. But anyways, let's get to the desktop environment. But before we continue on, smash that like button for me. It really does help me out. Maybe you don't want to install Arch Linux from scratch, but you do want to use Arch Linux or an Arch Linux based distribution. Maybe it's a little intimidating. Well, this might be a great alternative to getting Arch on your system because as we saw, it really breaks down the system for you with the welcome screen and has a lot pre-installed for you. Something else that's very great is the flavors available for Endeavor OS. There are all sorts of desktop environments, including XFCE, which we're using today to test with, Mate, Cinnamon, Gnome, Plasma, Budgie, Alex, Cute, i3WM, BSPWM, and Sway. So you have your choices between desktop environments full-fledged, or you can also install window managers as well, with some of the new ones being BSPWM and Sway. But now getting back to the desktop environment, on the top left-hand corner, we have applications where we can go through and look at various different subcategories here. We'll go through some of these in a moment, but let's talk about the right-hand side before we do. We have various different workspaces if you're trying to work on multiple things that you can group together as one. You can create the workspaces and then switch between them here. To the right of that, you have your current wired or wireless connection information. Then you have your volume control for both your output and input. Right of that, you have your battery power, notifications, and if you don't want to be disturbed, you, you can toggle this button on. Next to the right of that, we have the current user logged in, as well as a date and time, a very simple calendar here to check out. And then if you left click on your name of the user, you can get a lock screen as well as shut down and logging out. To the bottom in the middle is a little dock here, which allows you to minimize all open windows, start a terminal emulator, start the file manager, a web browser. So if we click on that real quick, let's just check it out what the default is. And of course it's Firefox as the default web browser. One thing that you can do with workspaces is you can actually move things around by just uh, selecting the icons and going between workspaces. Some people know that, some people don't. I'll exit out of here and continue on by checking out the application file Finder, which is just a quick search for your various different applications that come standard with Endeavor OS here. We'll exit out. And then finally a folder which allows you to quick launch a bunch of things here, either on the desktop, documents, really anything pertaining to the home user directory. Very good. And on the left hand side, you might have noticed that you can have icons on the desktop by default. That's enabled. And let's get back to applications. But before we do, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and operating system videos. Clicking applications, we have run a program, the terminal emulator, 
Again, file manager, a mail reader, web browser, which we know is Firefox. Settings give you access to all sorts of different settings on the system, including a power manager, pulse audio preferences, screensaver, XFCE, settings, Bluetooth, appearance, accessibility, and even more by just clicking the settings manager. Accessories gives you access to various different tools, such as the task manager, a text editor, the file manager, screenshot tool, a calculator, and a few more things there. Development. Development gives you an icon browser and a window comparison tool called Meld. Graphics shows you a image viewer called Ristretto. And then internet gives you access to a SSH and VNC server browser, including Firefox as the default web browser. Multimedia, we see that we have the Peril, Media Player, and Pulse Audio Volume Control. System gives you access for more system tools. And keep in mind, Welcome is under this category, which is the tool that I showed at the very beginning, the little greeter that we get, it's a great place to basically have a checklist to make sure that you're interacting with your system here in Endeavor OS and exploring all the options available for you. Going under applications, if you're not familiar with XFCE, you can read about it and get information on your current system. If you go to the about, you get more information about XFCE. But anyways, logout is the final feature here on the left-hand side. We'll move on to the file browser. So if we click on the file browser or manager, we now have access to the home user directory, home savvy Nick for me. This right here is using Thunar, which is developed for the XFCE desktop environment, 4.16 being used. Notice how at the bottom, once we've maximized things, our doc has been hidden and there's nothing too wild going on here in the Thunar file manager. We'll exit out. Another great tool offered by Endeavor OS is the discovery page, which is a wiki and contains a bunch of categories that help you again navigate Endeavor OS and learn more about the Arch Linux distribution, how to use window managers, video tutorials, just a bunch of great stuff. So make sure to check out Discovery on Endeavor OS's website. I'll put a link in the description below to make sure you can get to it. And here's the login screen just so you can get a look at it. Not much going on here. Select a user, type in the password, or up top to the right, you can select the default language that you're using, so American English for me. It says that we're running an XFCE session. You can also set accessibility things from here as well. On the far right-hand side, you can shut down or restart the computer if necessary. Let's log right in. Again, after a restart, you'll be welcomed by the greeter here, but you can hit don't show me again anymore if you don't want. If you want to re-enable it, it tells you how to do it in a terminal. All great. Speaking of terminals, let's start one up since I've just restarted and we'll check out the system resource usage with HTOP. HTOP's not installed. So before I get there, let's just talk about the package manager here. Since it's an Arch Linux based distribution, we can use Pacman as our package manager, which is great because then you have access to both the Arch user repositories as well as Arch packages, which is an expansive selection of packages available to the end user. One of my favorite packages managers and since we have pacman let's just check out what source repos are available here and looking at this we have the core extra community multi-lib repo and then finally the endeavor os repo available to us as well we'll use sudo pacman s htop to install htop real quick, get a feel for the terminal, nothing special here. It's using XFCE4 terminal version 0.8. Let's go right back and now we'll run htop. Looking at htop, we've been up for only about four minutes. The CPU is going between zero and 2%. The memory usage here is 445 megabytes out of eight gigabytes. Swap isn't being used. There's 72 tasks running with 130 threads and it's fairly minimal. It's what you would expect out of an XFCE full-blown desktop environment. Now, of course, you can bring this down even more as far as resource usage goes if you opt into using one of their available window managers. Like I mentioned before, they have 
i3, BSP, WM, Sway as options for window managers. Let's check out something else here, and that's NeoFetch. Let me see if they have this package by default. They sure do, which is great. Makes my life easy. So NeoFetch here tells us that we're running Endeavor OS, the x86 64-bit version, with kernel 5.12. So we're really caught up with where the kernel is currently at. We can tell this is kind of on the bleeding edge of kernel development. Uptime is five minutes. Packages 768, not bad. Shell version 5.1.8. We're using the XFCE 4.16 desktop environment with the window manager XFWM4. The theme and icons are Iowata. Terminal is the XFCE4 terminal, and the font for that terminal is Monospace 12. We're emulating this on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X today, and we're still using about 450 megabytes out of the eight gigs available. Some more information about Endeavor OS is that it launched right around June 2019, I believe. This is right after Antergos ended their project, and a lot of people from that community went over here to start on the Endeavor OS project. So it's a fairly new Linux distribution, definitely compared to some of the other long-standing ones like Debian or OpenSUE. Shortly after the project began, in around December of 2019, was when their first official ISO was released and with many developments between the years of 2019 and 2021 we now by april have the bsp wm and sway flavors available in the installer that's another great thing you don't select a different iso for all the different flavors you have one iso and you select what desktop environment or window manager you want to install on top of it a very nice and convenient way to do it instead of having to go through a bunch of selections right on their website you do it later in the install portion one last thing i'll mention on the the desktop environment is if you right click you do have another menu here which you can create a launcher a url link create a folder documents open a terminal open a new window arrange desktop icons desktop settings and then of course access more applications probably didn't see a default office suite so you might want to go to add more apps on the welcome screen and add in LibreOffice if you like using that one. You also have access to OpenOffice as well, but you'll probably have to install that from the package manager, Pac-Man. But either way, they do give you this option to install LibreOffice if you want real quick. Just be aware of it and be aware that you don't have a default office suite. Definitely something you might want to use uh, if you're trying to stay productive. But overall here, Endeavor OS is a perfectly great Arch-based Linux distribution that gives you all the power of Arch Linux in a minimal setting, but makes it easier to install Arch Linux for those users that don't want to go through that process of doing an Arch Linux base installation. There's plenty of features available here, and it is one of my favorite Arch Linux based distributions. I tend to enjoy it. It's also available on ARM. It seems they have a nice community backing it up and a decent amount of active developers. And if you visit their website, it looks really cool. Check it out. I'll put a link in the description below, but that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.